It doesn't take long for word to get around the Oklahoma Territory that there's a town right in the middle of it, just busting. Busting with opportunities, cattle, oil, rocks in the ground full of silver or gold. There are all kinds of reasons for a man to wander into our town. And Cimarron City opens her arms to welcome anybody who wants to be a part of her thriving growth. Larry Garner was welcomed, as few men had been before him. Do you think this would be good for curtain material? No. Well, why not? It's too heavy. You've got to have it heavy to make an elegant drape. I'll be with you in a minute, mister. No hurry, friend. Now, you know, if a government loves to even that, I gotta have something that's gonna harmonize with it. Got something that's perhaps in that green? How about this? The stage ought to be coming in any minute. from the counter, mister, and keep your hands up, all of you. If anybody moves, we'll cut them down. We already killed them two birds on a stage. We don't mind killing more. knocked over the stage as a decoy. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what they did. What you did was the bravest thing I ever saw. Well, thanks, ma'am, but I think you're all making too much of it. Mister, oh, no. let me shake your hand. I'm Silas Perry, the owner. Believe me, I was just lucky. You were lucky? Well, there ain't a man in town who don't have money in that safe of mine. Well, that's what they wanted. If you ask me, Simmer and City is plenty grateful. Congratulations. Thank you. Looks like we've got a hero in Cimarron City. <laughs> Wait till the town hears about that. You <laughs>
Well, now, this is a fine place for you to be. You never could have gotten out of here. down there? Yeah. Who's there? It's me, Brunner. Came at the right time. Give me a hand up there. Sure glad you came around when you did. Thanks a lot for the help. I was looking for you. I wanted to make sure you're going to be at your house this evening. Yeah, I'll be around the house. Why? What's up? Some of the boys are bringing a fellow out. They want you to meet him. His name's Laird Garner. He was in Perry's store when three guys tried to hold it up. Ran him off single-handed. I'll say I want to meet him. Most of that money in Perry's safe is mine. Next time, you stick with your mother. Come on. My name is Matt Rockford. Some people call me The Rock. But it was my dad who first dreamed about Cimarron City. He picked the site, built the first house, and then watched her start to grow. I was 23 years old when he died. Now the folks who live here look to me the same as they did to my father. Sometimes they act as if I'd been the one who founded the town. There he is, Matt. Laird Garner. If it hadn't been for him, you'd have been a lot poorer today. Mr. Garner, I hear we all owe you quite a bit. You don't owe me a thing, Mr. Rockford. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Don't you believe it, Matt. We can't get Lad to admit he did anything. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have better luck over some drinks. Unless some of you gentlemen object. Ooh, lead the way. Let's go. Well, I haven't tasted anything like this since I left St. Louis. You're from St. Louis, then? Originally. Since then, I've been sort of looking around for a place to settle down. Well, you might consider Cimarron City. We could use men like you around here. That's right. Well, as a matter of fact, I was sort of thinking along those lines when I rode into town this morning. I was about to ask what the business opportunities were here when all the shooting started. <laughs> <laughs> what is your business, Mr. Garner? I'm a banker. You sure didn't handle that gun like a banker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did a little shooting in the Army. Uh, you know, knowing how to handle a gun, it can be an asset to a banker these days. You know, we... we need a regular bank. I've never been happy about leaving my money in that tin box of Silas's. Never felt comfortable about it. Well, to me, it's more than just a matter of safety. Cimarron City has to have a bank because a town can't grow without putting its money to work. And it takes a bank to do that. You know banking all the way, Mr. Garner? All the way, Mr. Rockford. Forwards and backwards. I know what a bank can do. And I think a lot of this town. I've got great hopes for it. Well, the whole country's moving this way. And I, for one, would like to be here to meet it. Now, gentlemen, when I closed out in St. Louis, I made a sizable profit. I'd be willing to start a bank here if I thought the people would support it. You start your bank, Mr. Garner. And I'm sure if you handle things right, Cimarron City will support you. That's right. You're right, Matt. Welcome to Cimarron City. Yeah, Thank you, Mr. Folks can make it either tough or easy for an outsider to start a business in Cimarron City, according to what they think of him. For Laird Garner, it was going to be easy. They liked him. So did I.
Want more coffee? No, nothing more, Beth. Thank you. Lane. Please. Thank you, Beth. You know, Beth, I've eaten in a lot of boarding houses, but I've never tasted cooking like yours. <laughs> That's very flattering, Laird. You know, for a meal like that, a little uh, fresh air is indicated. If I were a doctor, I'd prescribe some for you. What do you mean by that? The front porch. It's full of it. All right, doctor. Don't have air like this in St. Louis. Or landladies like you either. The last place I stayed at, the landlady was about five feet tall and about as wide. <laughs> but you, well. You've made lots of friends in town, Laird. I can see why. It's not difficult to make friends with friendly people. I don't know when I've been made to feel so welcome. By everyone. You're an important guest my business to make you feel welcome. You do it very well. Well, I've rented the building a few doors down from Perry's store. We're going to start working on it tomorrow. Beth, I was wondering, uh... Oh, I didn't know you were busy. I'm not. Laird just wanted some air. Beth, I want to tell you about this boy. He's the one that really made me a hero the other day. Made a move for his gun at just the right time so I could get to mine and start shooting. Well, I didn't think you remembered. Oh, yes. Well, I've got a busy day tomorrow. Oh, Temple, I understand you're pretty good with your hands. What do you mean by that, Garner? Well, I'm going to need some special teller's cages in the bank. I've been told that you could build them. How about it? I can build them. Good. Drop by and see me tomorrow. Hmm? Good night, Beth. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. You don't like him very much, do you? Yeah, you heard what he said. Drop by the bank tomorrow, Temple. I'll toss you a bone. Laird Garner was a man of action. And he certainly knew how to get things done in a hurry. Just 23 days after the meeting at my house, his bank was ready for business. I came to town from my ranch to attend the grand opening. Too. Oh, good morning, Matt. Morning, Ladies. It's all right. Money. Hi, Gad Banker Garner. I won't be forgetting this. Nobody's ever loaned me any money. Think nothing of it, Mr. Tuger. Prosperous farms mean prosperous cities. Thanks a lot. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Laird. Well, looks like you made a friend of old Bert Tuger for life. Not too many bankers would consider old Bert a very good risk. That's why not too many bankers get to be anything but bankers. <laughs> Come on in the office, Matt. I'd like to pay you back that drink. Good morning. Nice to see you in the bank. Nice morning, Good morning, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Governor. You've got a good turnout, Laird. This is only the beginning, Matt. Like the end men in the minstrel shows back in St. Louis used to say, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> That's the way I feel right now. Yeah, I can believe that. Of course, the pioneering here has been done, thanks to men like you. But we've still got a lot of things to do, big things. And it takes big men to do big things. Men who aren't afraid of taking chances. You believe in taking chances, then? You took a few yourself when you founded this town, didn't you? That's right, Laird. But when I was taking chances, I only, only had myself to worry about. Well, Mr. Garner, Lane Temple is out here. You said you wanted to see him. Yeah, I'll be right out. From here on, Matt, there's nothing to worry about. We're all going places together. Good morning, Lane. I haven't seen much of you lately. You haven't been around much lately. I imagine this is what you're waiting for, Temple. Thanks. You did a good job on those teller's cages. Maybe one of these days I can dig up something else for you to do. Well, that's right nice of you, boss. Any little thing you can do.
just roped a little sorrel that I had started to break. But before I got the saddle on him, something else came up. The Cimarron City Sentinel's editor, Cal Deming, brought me a proof of the latest edition. He wanted to be sure that I approved of what it said before he ran it through the press. I thought you'd like to see that. You know how we all feel about you, Matt. The only reason we haven't got him there is because you've always turned down the job. You know, when my father died, Cal, he gave me some advice. I think he was right. He said that I could be of a lot more value to a town if I stayed out of politics and just sort of looked in, instead of the other way around. Well, we figured if we couldn't have you, Laird Garner would be as good a man as we'll find for the job. Well, he hasn't been around here very long. But from what I've seen of him so far, I kind of agree with you. Have you asked Garner? A committee met with him yesterday. He said he wasn't looking for the job, but he'd consider it his duty to accept a call from the people. And they seem to be calling. I'd say so. You know, the town is old enough to stand on its own feet, Cal. And I think it's starting to. I'm all for that. With your endorsement, Garner can't lose. Tell him he's got it. Good. Goodbye, Cal. Bye. Cimarron City had its first election campaign. For many of us, it was the first campaign we had ever taken part in. And by Eastern standards, it might have been a little noisy and hectic. There ain't a man or a woman in this crowd that doesn't know what Laird Garner did the very first day he got to this town, is there? Yeah. No one had any serious doubts as to the outcome of the voting. It's true that Ed Randall had consented to run for the office, but everyone knew it was, was only a formality. You all know my esteemed opponent, Ed Randall. There's not a man in this town who doesn't like him and respect him. Of course, Ed's a bookish man. He knows all about what the books say. But there's something more important than books, and that's people. And you just don't learn about people out of books. But you pick your man. And when the polls open tomorrow, you get out and vote. Now, Ed Randall here would make a mighty fine mayor. I just happen to think I'd make a better one. <laughs> Election morning brought a bright sun, a warm breeze, and an electorate which turned out almost to the man. There was one name which was on almost every lip. Laird Garner. I turn out I won't have to tell you about the cigarettes. Tuker. Okay. Now you just take these and go to that there booth and write down the name of the man you want. Then drop your ballot in the box. What if I can't write? Then you just make a mark. One X for Randall and two X's for Garner. And don't forget to bring the pencil back. Now, you just take these and go to that there. Oh, excuse me. I didn't see you, Matt. It's all right, Silas. Now, you just take these and go to that there booth and write down the name of the man you want. Then drop your ballot in the box. Okay. Now, vote for the man you want and drop your ballot in the box. Hi, Lane. Looks like a great night for Cimarron City, huh? Yeah, great. Gonna get us a real mayor now. Yep, looks that way. Evening, Lane. Well, Matt, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, where else would I be? 
You know, it seems to me, Matt, that you've been bending over backwards to keep from exerting any influence over Cimarron City. People here are capable of taking care of themselves, Lane. <laughs> Now, me and Cal Deming been inside counting. And if anybody wants to check our figures, you're welcome to. Quit the jabbering, Jed. Give us a count. All right, here's the results. Ed Randall, 231 votes. Hey! Ed Garner, 1,400. Hey! showed your confidence in me by electing me the first mayor of Cimarron City. And I'll tell you this, I'm going to give this town the best government any town ever had anywhere. <laughs> Before we go inside and I show you how grateful I am, I'll tell you something you can tell your grandchildren. It was your votes that elected the man who's going to make a name for Cimarron City. We've got a clean slate, and we're going to write history on it. And the first order of civic business is free drinks on his honor, Mayor Laird Garner. Come on in. Yeah. To his honor, Laird Garner, Mayor of Cimarron City. Thank you, Mayor. Who'd have thought it? Now that you've won, Your Honor, what do you plan to do? Well, right now, you've got me. If you're talking about something specific, I know one thing for sure. This town's got a future. And that future is all tied up with Laird Garner. Well, in a way. And it would have taken you for a dreamer. Me? A dreamer? No, I don't dream. I do. That's why I left St. Louis. There wasn't enough to do anymore. Just what did you do in St. Louis? I tried to build a life for Laird Garner. The kind of life I like. The kind of life this town's offered me. What about you, Beth? Well, what about me? I like you. I like you a lot. Beth, I'm going to build things in this town, but not just for myself. I want to do things for someone, someone special. Beth, we'll go far together, you and I. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. I asked for it. My husband used to kiss me like that. Your husband? Didn't know I'd been married? I'm surprised. Just didn't occur to me. I saw you tonight when the results of the voting were announced. You remind me a great deal of him. Is that bad? I was in love with him. Funny. I was supposed to be so sensible and... Yet the men I'm attracted to. What happened to your husband? He was killed in a gunfight the day after we were married. If he had lived, he might have been elected mayor in a strange town. He was a gambler. Most men are gamblers one way or another. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Maybe. But my husband deserved to die, Mr. Mayor. He cheated at cards. A week later, Mayor Garner called a special meeting of the newly appointed city council. The city had called for leadership, and that's what Garner gave them, right from the beginning. Maybe even a little more than they had bargained for. Good morning, boys. Good morning, lad. Good morning, lad. What's on your mind? Well, I'll come right to the point. Gentlemen, I've been making a little survey on my own, and I've come to this conclusion. This town is too tight. We could pick up a lot more business from the trail herds and ranches around here if we offered them a little more for their money. I want to see Cimarron City open up. Well, I don't you know about that, city. Laird. Wait a minute. I think the mayor's right. What are your objections, Ed? Well, if you open up the town, we're letting ourselves in for a lot of problems. Ben Tompkins is a good sheriff, but I don't think he could handle an open town. I agree with you. That's why I fired him this morning. What, you fired him? What do you mean you fired him? Ben's getting to be an old man. And I can't see holding up the growth of a town just because it has a sheriff that can't handle any problems that might come up. Ben Tompkins is a mighty fine fella. Don't let your friendship for Ben influence your concern for the welfare of the town. Come right down to it, I think we're mighty lucky. I've got an old friend waiting outside I want you to meet. Jim? Boys, this is Jim Martin. Mr. Martin? Jim was the best foreman my father ever had on the ranch. He's also one of the best lawmen in the Southwest. I'm glad to tell you he's available for the job. Where have you been working, Mr. Martin? Down around the Mexican border. And you know what kind of a man it takes to wear a badge down there. Well, if you say he's all right, lad, I'll go along. Well, I don't know, lad. Seems awful sudden, like. That's why I was elected to this job, to get things done sudden. Now, if we open up Cimarron City, we're going to need Jim Martin. Personally, I'd like to know more about Mr. Martin. Not that I have anything against him. Ed, I hate to say this, but it seems to me you're the only member of this council who's dragging his feet. If I didn't know you better, I think you were sore about losing the election. Well, that's not so, Laird. If the majority of the council wants Mr. Martin, I'll go along with him. Good. Here's your badge, Jim. I'll swear you in as soon as I can find a copy of the oath. How about deputies? I figure I'll need two or three. I know some good men, so does Jim. We'll wire them right away. Well, seems to me there are enough men right here in town who'd welcome deputy jobs. Well, that's what I was thinking. Friend, if I'm going to run an office here, you better just figure I know my business. Where I come from, a sheriff picks his own deputies. That's standard practice. I think it doesn't make much difference, as long as it's organized. Seems like a lot of lawmen for mighty few laws. You men just furnish the business. I'll furnish the laws. Mayor Garner promised there'd be a lot of changes in Cimarron City, and he kept his word. He said a bank would make a lot of difference to the town, and he was right. Made a lot of difference to Andy Lynch, who discovered that one day he had a partner and when Paul Mincher's livery stables needed extra financing, Paul woke up with a partner, too. And like Garner said, a bank would help things grow. An emergency loan made here, the right security there, a mortgage here. Yeah, things grew. They grew in one direction. He made a lot of loans. In many cases, just for the asking. It made a difference to many people. They didn't want to bite the hand that fed them. Or perhaps they didn't dare. Cimarron City opened just like Garner wanted it to. We had a lot of new residents. Of course, they, they weren't exactly the kind of newcomers many of us had in mind. Faro dealers, poker players, dance hall girls. But they, they brought a lot money in with them. 
Only some of the people wondered if it were right that Laird Garner should own half interest in the gambling concession in Jeb Fame's saloon. People were starting to get a little unhappy, and maybe they would have done something about it. But one morning, something happened. And it put Cimarron City into a state of shock. Nice action, Jed. Yeah, but I don't like the way some of these dealers act. They got no call to be so touchy. Somebody just shot Ed Randall. How did this happen? I don't know for sure, Leon. Did any of you see who shot him? No. I think Mrs. Randall was with him when it happened. Jed, get the council together. We're going to have a meeting. Yeah, I'll get him to get him a saloon right now. I didn't want that, Jim. I didn't want Ed Randall killed. He was in your way, boss, wasn't he? Yeah, but I didn't want him killed. Well, you didn't do it, boss. Neither did I. Now that he's dead, you don't regret that he's dead, do you? I'm running this town. And I can run it without killing. You don't need men like Randall. You need more men like me. It was an accident. A lucky accident. Use it, boss. Randall was a good friend to every one of us. To me, he was a good opponent and an honest man. His murder was an outrage. And I tell you now, I won't rest till his murderer is brought to justice. We're going to crack down, and we're going to crack down hard. I'm going to have law and order around here, and I don't care what I have to do to get it. And law and order is what Cimarron City got. Garner's brand. More deputies. Men like Turk Blaney who was hired shortly after Ed Randall's murder. Men of a pattern. And with them came fear. This was a new experience for Cimarron City. It was the kind of feeling you could get in a hundred other towns from here to California. But there was one thing about ours that had made it different from the others. That is up to now. All you had to do was take one look at Turk Blaney and the others like him. And you knew that Cimarron City couldn't be the same anymore. Not as long as they were around. Laird Garner had risen to a position where he had a financial stranglehold on the town. And now Randall's murder had given him the opportunity to extend his power to include armed physical control. I'd been away on a business trip for a couple of weeks. And the day I got back, Lane Temple came out to my place with the most recent edition of the paper. And already, Mayor Garner went on, evidence of this administration's progressive policies are on every hand. In another year, Garner's town will... Garner's town? Garner's town? What's the matter with Cal Deming, anyway? Has he lost his mind? Cal has no choice. He's up against Laird Gardner, your friend. That's right. Laird Gardner and his gang. They're the new editors of the Cimarron Sentinel. If you ask me, Matt, you've played the fond father a little too long. Cimarron City's got itself a passel of trouble. And you better look into it before it gets clean out of hand. I'm afraid you're right. Just a minute, you can't go. Well, Mr. Rockford, I wasn't expecting to see you. You get out. Why, you... Wait a minute, Jim. Mr. Rockford's a sort of privileged character around here. Anything you want to say to me, you can say in front of Jim. Beat it, Jim. I'll see you later. All right, Matt, let's have it. Garner, I don't like strong-arm tactics. And I don't like hired guns. I'm not much interested in what you don't like. Well, you'd better start getting interested. You've been pulling strings around here until nothing happens unless you give it your personal okay. 
Now you're dictating policy to the paper. I don't like any of it. And there's something else I like even less. It occurs to me that Ed Randall's death was a mighty happy coincidence for you. Are you accusing me of murdering Ed Randall? I'm thinking about it. Up to now, I haven't interfered. Because I like to see people stand on their own two feet. But they don't know how to deal with a man like you. Matt, you've got a lot to learn. It's about me and about people. First of all, I didn't ask for this job. Your citizens pushed me into it. You don't question that, do you? I told the truth when I came here. I ran a couple of banks in St. Louis. It just happens that one of them was a faro bank. I'm a gambler. But I don't welch and I don't weasel. And I don't cheat. But I know a good bet when I see one. And I see one here. Now let me tell you something about you. Underneath everything you say is the fact that you can't forget it was Matt Rockford who built this town. And you don't want anyone else to forget it either. You missed the boat and I didn't. And you don't like it. You really figure that way, don't you? Why don't you smarten up, Matt? Go along with me and we'll all profit. If you don't, have no illusions about where you'll stand. Because from here on in, I'm the law. This town is Garner's town, and its people are Garner's people. Your day is over, Matt. You belong to the past. And you're the future. The battle lines were drawn. I had made it as plain to Garner as, as he had to me. But he wasn't bluffing. His power was strong. I needed something even stronger to break him. Good evening. Hello. Is Mr. Rockford in? Yes, in his study. Thank you, Bajor. Evening, Lane. Matt. Mr. Randall. Hello, Mr. Rockford. What's on your mind, Lane? Matt, we have something very important to tell you. Come in. Now, Mrs. Randall, you tell him exactly what you told me. Well, I guess you know I saw Ed, my husband, get shot. I saw the man who shot him. He was tall, dark. I'd never seen him before, but I knew I'd never forget him. Oh? I saw him again, Mr. Rockford, today. Where? He was dressed differently. He must have used some sort of disguise at the time. But he couldn't fool me. Where was he? Standing in front of the Oklahoma Saloon, Matt. Wearing a badge. No, it's not Martin, if that's what you're thinking. But it's just as good. Turk Blaney. Are you sure, Mrs. Randall? I'm sure. That's all we need. Are you living alone, Mrs. Randall? Yes. I don't like that. Wayne, see if Beth would mind staying with Mrs. Randall for a few days. Why? Surely they wouldn't want I to... I don't know, but right now I don't want to take any chances. Get going, Lane. I can't tell you anything more than that, Beth. Not just yet. Well, if Matt wants me to stay with Mrs. Randall, of course I will. You can tell him it's all right. Thanks, Beth. Mrs. Randall? I'll just get a few things. All right. That night, I sent Lane to Oklahoma City to tell the U.S. Marshal that we had a witness to Ed Randall's murder. And I warned Lane to be on the lookout for Garner's men that might try to stop him. Where's Mr. Rockford? In his study, ma'am. I'll go and... Oh, Matt. What is it, Beth? Mrs. Randall's disappeared. What? It must have happened in the early hours of the morning. I was asleep. When I got up, I called her and there was no answer. I went into her room and it was empty. Bedding on the floor and her clothes were strewn all over. Oh, Matt, I'm scared. Don't be. On the way over here, I ran to Guy Bruner. He said he saw her with Jim Martin late last night. Bye, Jeff. Get my horse. Matt, what are you going to do? I'm going to go find Bruner. Guy Bruner had seen Mrs. Randall, I wanted to see him. His ranch was between mine and town. When I got there, 
He wasn't around, but someone else was. What are you doing out here? Maybe I'm looking the place over. Maybe I'm thinking of buying it. Oh? Where's Bruner? He's not here. Where is he? I don't know. I think you do. Now we're going to start from the beginning all over again. What are you doing out here? You're not even wearing a gun, Rockford. Where's Bruner? I told you, I don't know. Town. We're in town. Livery stable. Guy Brunner, he shot himself. Oh, I wouldn't exactly say that. Looks more like he was cleaning his gun and it went off. Right between the eyes. Where were you when it happened? Oh, I just happened to be walking by right outside. Heard the gun go off. He's right, Matt. He was here when, when I got here. That's what I figured. Hey! Ooh. White man look for a woman? Well, yes. We find a woman, back by river. Maybe the same one you look for. She's the one. Garner, where's Mrs. Randall? How do I know where she is? That's... Mrs. Randall came to my house, told me she saw the man who killed her husband right here in town, weeks after the murder. And he wasn't just passing through, he works here. He wears a badge. Name is Turk Blaney. Feels like she ought to have come to me if she's gonna make wild charges like that. Last night, Mrs. Randall disappeared. Rockford. You've been trying to make trouble for my administration right along. I never thought you'd try to cook up something like this. These good people aren't gonna believe you. Maybe. But they can believe what they see. Just take a look around you. Try to think of the town you used to live in. I can remember when it was clean. And a man didn't have to bend his knee to make a living. I can remember when you could come into Jed's place here and, and play a friendly game and still go home with a few bucks left in your pocket. But not anymore. Jed isn't complaining. A man doesn't complain with a gun at his ribs. You had a good town. You were all as free as you wanted to be. But there isn't a man among you now who isn't afraid. Maybe you're not afraid of Garner's guns. And he's certainly got plenty of them. But you're afraid. You're afraid of not being able to earn a living. Of not being able to earn a living in Garner's town. You can't speak up. You can't complain. You can't complain because Jim Martin and his men will clamp down, and they'll clamp down hard. Listen, Rockford, I've had about enough. Let him talk. Lane Templer's gone to the U.S. Marshal to lay it all out for him. I can't seem to get too worried, Rockford. All you've got to go on is a so-called identification by an hysterical woman. You told me yourself she'd skipped town. I said she disappeared. Guy Bruner got word to me that he saw her last night with Jim Martin. But Guy Bruner accidentally shot himself just a few minutes ago. You're making too much noise, Rockford. So you don't like the way I'm doing things. All right. But I've got a town to run, and it's a tough town. And that's the way I'm running it, tough. 
Law has to have guns to back it up. I've got the guns. And just which one of those guns murdered Ed Randall? I wish just once you'd wear your gun when you're shooting off your mouth. Are you making a charge? That's right. You're taking a big chance. You're through, Garner. I'm putting you down. One of us is through, but it's not me. Get out of my town, Rockford. Hold it, lad. You can't say that. He's right. What do you mean, my town? Shut up, unless you want to go, too. Well, Rockford? Get your hands off the guns, Blaney. Put the gun away, Temple. You say one more word and I'll kill you, Martin. Get over there. You too. Did you get to the marshal, Lane? Yeah, but it doesn't make any difference. What do you mean by that? Coming in. I ran into some old sages out by the river. They gave me a present. It's on my horse. What is it, Lane? Shirley Randall's body. <laughs> Sometimes you hold the right cards, Matt. And sometimes you don't. like some people who come to Cimarron City would like to change her into something she isn't. Laird Garner had come mighty close to doing just that because we were late in realizing that he was like a contagious disease. Well, I guess a town's got a right to get sick when it's growing up, same as a kid. But there's one thing about it. Once you've had a childhood disease, you never have it again. Cimarron City had its first trial by fire, gunfire. And Cimarron City had passed the test. Mm -hmm. 